Hi, I'm Dave Miller, and uh, I'm the president and one of the founders of the Diplomatic Studies Foundation. Uh, I was an ambassador to Tanzania some time ago and then to Zimbabwe. And shortly after that, then I was on the National Security Council staff with Brent Scowcroft. And among uh, areas of my responsibility, uh, I, I had Africa. I'm here today uh, playing in our fifth peace game, uh, which is being held right now here at USIP. And uh, we hope there are going to be many more of them going forward right here. Critical minerals are those that are required to produce goods of strategic importance. And I don't mean things that go boom, I mean things like batteries and components of equipment that the world needs to make its economy work. And it's been shifting, the components of that have been shifting dramatically since the day was iron ore at the end of the Great Lakes or coal here or a steel mill in Pittsburgh. It's now components that go into batteries and processors and things that fly into space. And those minerals are of critical importance. Were they not available or something to upset that, you would find that the chips in your car might not be as available as you'd like or the chips in your phone. We have a lot of war games, and we're good at going to war. Honest to God, this country goes to war well. What we don't do is practice keeping the peace. Keeping the peace in the developing world is a challenge, and it can come from understanding what the environment's going to do to stability. What about a lack of jobs? What's that going to do to instability? What about organized terrorism arriving? How, how do you solve a hostage issue? How do you train local authorities to try to fight corruption? And so on and so forth. And the interesting thing is that we don't, <laughs> We don't train to do that. I mean, we've got, we've got missions all around the world in developing countries that really are responsible for our advancing our national interests. And those national interests frequently include stability, limited refugee flow, limited development of pathogens, limited providing homes for training of, of international terrorists. I mean, just start off on the list. So why not train for that? Why not, why not focus on the fact that we have skills that can help with water supply? We have skills to transfer technology. We have skills to learn how to achieve national objectives without shooting people. We don't want to go to war over minerals. We really don't want to go to war over anything. For those who have not been around war, there may be some illusion that this is a fine way to settle things. It's not. It's a terribly expensive way to settle things. So if you can use civilian capabilities to avoid going to war, you really ought to do that. Mm -hmm.